Yeah, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Mr. Shakespeare here on the 31st of uh, August 2022. And I'm here with psychic medium and remote viewer Liz Cross. How are you doing today, Liz? Uh, very well, thank you. Okay. Um, so we're going to bounce around a few things today. Um, this is... Uh, Ayrton Senna, he was a Formula One champion back when Formula One wasn't, was raced with real drivers and not computers. So, like 30 odd years ago. <laughs> you, you mean they're raced by computers? Well, pretty much now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the cars are computerized? Well, the cars, the telematics, everything, they can be almost controlled. It's almost like giant scale electrics now. They can almost be controlled by the control. I mean, seriously, it's got so, it, it's become a battle of computers almost. But anyway. Oh, I didn't know that. I don't know anything about car racing or Formula One. It's not my cup of tea at all. No. no. Okay. Well, this guy is Ayrton Senna and he he was um, a world famous uh, racing driver he won Formula 1 I believe 88, 90 and 91 something like that, he's Brazilian um, so he was uh, born about 1960 or something if I remember and he, he died I think 90. 394. Okay. Like from memory, anyway. I can't remember. It's something like that. Um, so, uh, have you got a connection with him, please? I do. I do have a connection with him. He has his helmet in his hand. Wow. Okay. Um, right. I need to look him up a bit, so I do need to. Okay, yeah, he was 94. I was right. Um so apparently he was killed when his car crashed into a concrete barrier when he was leading the 1994 San Marino Grand Prix. Yes, he's, that's correct. He's confirming that. Okay. What happened? Okay. Well, what, what happened? Yeah, what caused the crash? I mean, how did, what, what, what happened? What, what happened? Okay, he's actually reenacting it for me. Um, so he's behind the wheel, and somehow the steering broke. And when the steering broke and the wheel went, so you know how like a wheel, you know, when your car's in alignment, the wheel is, you know, you know, it looks like a regular wheel, and you have that you know, your bars on the wheel, you know what I mean? So you can tell what, which way it is, right? Mm -hmm. Something happened, like the steering column broke and his wheel goes sideways. So he, he lost the ability to steer the car. So the steering wheel was disconnected from the steering rack or the track or the control arms or whatever they have. I mean, it's all, it was all mechanical in those days, completely mechanical. So, I mean, is that what happened? Is that what happened that the steering became disconnected? It didn't become disconnected, he's telling me. It became faulty. Something broke. Something in the steering column, column broke. Yeah, okay. Right. Uh... Okay. He lost control. It's almost like he couldn't turn and he went straight forward. He went straight into a barrier. It, I feel like it's a wall or it's it's definitely concrete. Yeah, concrete. Well, they're saying it was concrete barrier. Um, okay. The way he's showing it to me is like a wall, but there was nothing he can do. Now, I want you all to know. When did your soul leave the body? As the car was crashing, okay, 
his soul left. It happened very quickly, but was the body still? So he actually, okay, I like this. This is a good probe. He actually left the body before the body died. Hmm. That is a very common thing. Okay. You know, when people die in very tragic circumstances and it's like, oh my God, the pain they must have been in or the wreckage or whatever it is, when it's a traumatic circumstance, the, the soul will actually leave before the body dies, which is why when you have things like near death experiences, the soul leaves before the body dies. If it turns out that they could revive the body, you know, that I think that was all predetermined to happen anyway. When somebody has a near death experience, the body survives. Well, the soul can come back. But in order to not experience the pain of the traumatic event, the soul actually leaves the body. And so his, his soul left his body very quickly, right as the car started to impact, right? So, so even though it happened very, very fast, as the car just touches the, what he shows me, it looks like a, a concrete wall or something. As the car is just touching the concrete and it's starting to cave in, like if you're looking at it in slow motion, his soul was gone. So before the impact came in and crushed his body, right? His soul was gone. I feel like was there's a lot of smoke. Okay, you just broke up there after you said I feel like. <coughs> Sorry. I feel like there was there was a lot of smoke in the in the vehicle as well. Like it was very like but he was gone. He was gone before his body was even touched by any of the car um you know coming in. Uh he his body was gone. Yeah, I'm just looking at another picture. Yeah, there was a lot of smoke. Obviously there's fuel and everything. Um, yeah, in fact, the, the day before he died, another racing driver in the same San Marino Grand Prix, Ratzenberger or something, I remember he died as well. He hit the wall or he hit something at about 190 miles an hour or something. So, um, oh, yeah, so this was quite a bad Grand Prix, actually. Um, a bad... Okay, um, let's ask why. Why well, was it such a bad Grand Prix? There were a lot of problems and a lot of difficulties, right? Um, he kind of knew something wasn't right with the car as he was driving. And he's saying to me, he should have stopped. He should have pulled over, but he didn't want to lose the lead. He was in the lead, right? So he didn't want to lose his place. And he pushed it. He knew that there was something wrong. Yeah, he actually it wasn't in the race. It was in the qualification before. So you you do lap times to qualify, and the faster the lap time, the further up the grid that you get. If you see what I mean. So you're racing against the clock on the qualification, not oh. against. The clock. Yeah. So he actually died on a qualification, a qualifying lap. Okay. Okay. Well, that that's. That certainly is why he didn't stop the vehicle because he didn't want to lose. He's saying to me his, his place. Yeah. Um, so that would make sense. I mean, I don't know anything about racing, right? <laughs> I don't know anything about qualifiers or the race itself. The vehicle. Does he, does he, does he, is there, was there any suspicion of any kind of foul play or is it just, so a mechanic did something wrong or was it just a, a component that failed bad manufacturing or what was it? What does he think? What was it put down? He believes it was uh, something to do with a part. I can see it. It's something very simple, like almost like a, a round part that goes on the base of what he's showing me. And again, I don't know. Look, all I know about cars is I get in it and I, um he it's definitely like a base 
part like a of joint, the, like a swivel joint or something yeah or something it? yeah like it it yeah something like that i mean i don't know what a swivel joint is is it a swivel joint yes i feel like it is it's something at the base and it's round and that yeah. just like broke and it, the, 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 the vehicle, but he knew something was wrong. Um, do you believe there was foul play involved? No, no, he does not believe there's foul play involved. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, parts fail on cars, on planes, on boats, on everything. I mean, you know, sometimes there's a manufacturing issue. They just fail. I mean, it happens, you know. Um, Okay. It's a shame. I mean, oh, oh, he was a brilliant driver. Yeah, was he? I, I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. he was. Yeah, yeah, he was very good. Yeah, he was you know, very, it's a dangerous sport. It is. He's very much missed. Uh, so I used to follow Formula One back in those days. I don't now, but I used to. So. Okay, um, that's it. That's all we need to know. All right. Well, thank you very much. And again, if anybody has any questions or comments or follow up. You can do that on the Discord where you can interact directly with Mr. Shakespeare, the wonderful Mr. Shakespeare, and any of the other interviewers. They all have their own little category there on the Discord. You get to the Discord by joining the Patreon at Remote Viewing and Beyond. And if you want to book a reading with me, then you need to go to PsychicLizCross.com. Thank you very much. This was actually very interesting, even though I'm not into it. It was, it was good. Thank you.